This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. KCM Wealth Management. On September 7th, my guest today and I agreed to do a program uh, today on the office bully. Uh, that may have changed dramatically because, as you all know, about two weeks ago, the dreadful and tragic story of Amanda Todd hit the front pages, and it has never really left. This is today's newspaper. It, that story of bullying and suicide continue, and it's become a national uh, story with everybody weighing in. That may or may not change the focus of our conversation. I'm delighted to uh, welcome to our show Maureen McGrath, who is a registered nurse, and she specialized uh, uh, over many years in sexual health, among other things, and reproductive health. And uh, we could take 20 minutes to list all her accomplishments, <laughs> but let's just <laughs> stick with this one. The recipient of the Vancouver Coastal Health Nursing Excellence Award, in 2009, 2010, and of course she is best known to Vancouver audiences as the host of the Sunday Night Sex Show, on which, curiously, I've never been a guest <laughs> <laughs> of a giant 98 CKNW from 8, 8 to 9. How could you have a sex conversation without me? Maureen, great it's to see you. a standing yeah. invitation yeah. for you. Standing, okay. <laughs> Man, everything with you is going to be one of those. Yeah, okay. So uh, we, 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 of course, can talk about the office bully, but I'm sure you must have just fallen off your chair when this story broke. I did. I think it's just so sad that Amanda Todd has gotten to the point where she needed to take her life. She had nobody to stand up for her. And that's really important in bullying. We've learned so much from Amanda Todd's story. That yes. video that she left us will really live on in our hearts for a long time. And we have a lot to learn about what what are the helpful things? What might have helped Amanda? It was too late for Amanda Todd, unfortunately, but it's not too late for some other victims of this abuse that occurs from the cradle really to the casket. And it occurs at home, and it occurs in the office, and at the dry cleaners, and at the fish plant. It occurs everywhere. Mostly, it's men bullying women, although although it's sometimes men bullying men. And I mean, it crosses all the genders, all the 22 genders. Uh, let's look at some of the first signs, some of the, some of the, oh, you're wearing that today, that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's a very interesting point because people yeah. don't recognize what office bully is or what the workplace bully is. Yes. They think they've, uh, the, the boss is charming, they've landed a great job, they've got the corner office, a capricious title, everything seems great, and yeah. then all of a sudden, maybe a month later, two months later, he, the boss, and it may be a man or it may yeah. be a woman, yeah. um, gives an off comment, and you think, what was that? That's exactly. really out of character for him or for her. It's, it's like it's like everything's cool, and then there's just one note. That's right. Go, huh? And you say, excuse me? Yeah. And the words of advice I want to give is if that happens, document it right away. Start and yes. say, I hope I don't have to document again, but do document. It's very important. But then it's, it's very subtle, actually. It's covert. It doesn't yes. happen in front of other people. According to some research at the Workplace Bully Institute, 3% of people have actually witnessed workplace bullying. So it's, it's repeated incidents, and that's very important as well. It may yes. be in the hallway. It may be humiliation during a meeting. It may be just an off comment, but it happens repeatedly over a period of time. Uh, uh, Marie, what is it about for the bully? Is it all about power? Is it about an insecure nitwit who just feels the only way to raise his level is to put somebody down? I mean, what, what is that about? It, it is, and it's very interesting because it's never about a promotion, it's never about the money, and it's never about saving money. It's never about earning money or saving money. It is all about power and control, as you say. Because for the most part, the bully, and not all of them, because some don't realize they're actually doing it, and once they're made aware of it, they will stop. 
But some of the others, those that have a personality disorder, for example, it's about the power and control over somebody else so that they feel better. I like to say they... Uh, put out somebody's light for their darkness. So they wow. want someone else's light for their darkness. Yeah, nice, nicely put. I, I, you know, I used to make a goofy joke in restaurants if, if a waitress was sort of not being the most pleasant she could be, I would yeah. jokingly <laughs> say, hey, if I wanted this level of disrespect, I could have stayed home with the wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> so how often is, is a man who is being henpecked or driven crazy by his wife taking this out on female employees? Never. <laughs> ah! Ah! I'm going to say never. Yeah. Generally, bullies yeah. have problems or issues in every domain of their life. So they really? have financial problems, they have social oh. problems and personal problems, and they may not actually be in a relationship, or they may have a series of relationships that have ended. So to, to say that it may be the stress at home, although I think stress does increase, the rate at which a bully will uh, continue the behaviors, the corrosive behaviors in the workplace, does certainly contribute. Here's an, in here's an interesting question. Uh, uh, I found, uh, you know, spending a lot of time interviewing famous people and celebrities, that the bigger the people are, the more wonderful they are. The only people who ever gave me a bad time in my career interviewing people mm -hmm. were the climbers, the people in the middle who are still striving. Right. So in the office or on the construction site or whatever, are the bullies the top of the heap or are they the guys somewhere, you know, middle management, vice president? The bully can be anybody, a yes. man or a woman, but yes. for the most part it's a man who abuses yes. a woman in the workplace. They can be subordinates, they can be the boss, they can be the chief executive officer, they can be a manager, they can be a new employee. Um, so it, it can really be anybody. Now, if, if, it's, if it's a boss or your manager, you've got a real problem, don't you? Because you, how, to whom do you cry help? That's exactly right. And you really don't go to the management. And research shows that it doesn't help if you go to human resources. It does not help if Why? you go... Why? <laughs> Why? They're the people who are supposed to help. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they are. But the research is, yeah, yeah. is that it does not necessarily help. I think you should report it. One should report it to Human Resources and, and keep a paper trail of that. Yes. But Human Resources doesn't like to admit necessarily that they've perhaps made a grave error in hiring a bully, for example. Or, or organizations think this bully is actually doing, doing something for us or representing us in one way or another. They don't realize that the bully also contributes to behaviors in the workplace like absenteeism, so um, workers take days off. Also, a high turnover rate, which is very expensive. It'll add to 40% of your costs as well. And there's also some new legislation around workers' compensation that this will be a compensable action. So not only can bullies' behavior hit the bottom line, it'll, it's also going to cost companies more money. If you work in a union environment and you are a union member, you could go to your union uh, representative, I suppose. You could go to your union representative, but I also know of cases where people went to their union representative and that did not help. Well, what, are the, what, what does what help? Is, what is the reaction? I mean, are people going, are you kidding? Are you imagining this? Is that what people get? They are, and actually it's turned on the target. The target is chosen. The target is chosen by the bully because they generally are a bright light in the organization. They are women where, you know, we do yeah. for others. We're productive. We want to help. That's our yeah. nature. We're, we're more of a nurturing yeah. type of an individual. Canada, corporate Canada is based on the military and sports, so right, right. that ne That's doesn't necessarily... High competition. Exactly. So yes. that target is actually chosen and the light, um, they want to put that light out. So that person gets the blame. That person eventually starts to become ill. They get anxiety, they may get heart racing, losing their hair, losing weight, losing sleep. They, they start to become not very good at their job. How many, so it, in, in your experience, excuse me, Maureen, I interrupt mm -hmm. you, but in, nope. uh, in your experience, how many people, women in particular, don't even recognize what's happening to them. And they, and they start having these kinds of symptoms that you described, mm -hmm. sleeplessness and so on, That's anxiety, right. uh, hitting the coffee pot too often, whatever, smoking more, and they're not really recognizing that someone is constantly at me. That's right, and they also have, because my relationship to it is as a sexual health uh, yes. registered nurse, they yeah. also have low sexual desire, which can impact their relationship at ah. home, their personal relationship. 
I would say it's close to 100% of people that yes. do not recognize that they are being bullied in the office. And that's why it's really important to not only raise awareness, but to advise people what they can do to put an end to this. Because what, a it's one, a, what, a, what, what a wonderful cycle. You, you're being bullied in the office, so you have low sexual desire. So you <laughs> come home and your husband bullies you for having low sexual desire. Exactly. What a nightmare. <laughs> Women uh, can't win. Yeah. <laughs> Does that really happen? It does I mean, I'm happen. making a silly joke out of it, but uh, it, I'm you're, sure that you must happen. You are spot on. Absolutely, yeah. that does happen. Men must be saying, well, what's the matter with you, babe? You know, what's That's happened? right. Yeah. Men and women yeah. have desire yeah. discrepancy, and so yeah. men think about <gasps> sex. <laughs> desire? <laughs> I'm going to be 70 next month, and this is the first I ever heard of DD. Desire discrepancy. You thought it was all ED, yeah, but it's not. Yeah. It's DD. Oh, my God. Is there a bill for DD? Yeah. No. Where's the Cialis when you need it? Yeah. That's right. There's there's no yeah. pill for women, yeah. unfortunately, but lots of options for men for their sexual health. Yeah. So office bully is really largely related to misogynism and sexism. It's it's the sexual harassment we saw in the 70s you that's would, happening today. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm forever the optimist, and you would think that when people, when corporations hire lead people, you know, executives and so on, they would think about you know is this guy a misogynist is this guy does this guy respect everybody well it's it's a ch it's a challenge because these people especially if they have narcissistic personality disorder and often they do yes. often bullies do they start out as charming they are gregarious they are hilarious and they are seductive the next relationship to sexual health could could be a tv talk show it could be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never. Char charming, <laughs> hilarious, seductive. Exactly. Good morning, charming, <laughs> hilarious, and seductive. I'm sorry, he's on the golf course. Yes. Um, but they they are able to seduce a solar system of supporters. So those supporters become end up being the bystanders, and so they actually promote I this you were behavior. Going to say the bisexual. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting yeah. though, the bully often has asexual is asexual or is promiscuous. So they have sexual health issues as well. If they oh, have really? narcissists. That, yes, that is they interesting. Do. But the, a lot of yeah. people have sexual health issues and sexual The bully is often asexual, meaning often, not, uh, turned off generally. That's right. Really yeah, doesn't yeah. engage. It has difficulty yeah. with intimacy, to be honest. Yeah. But they're very seductive. So they may yeah. use their charm or their good looks to bring yeah. in this solar system of supporters who become innocent bystanders. And that's the other uh, person in I the like dance. the way you put that, a solar system of, of supporters, because that's what people do. They gather camps around them, don't they? They do. Especially they do. In, in, in a structured environment like an office. That's right. And people, yeah. especially today with the recession or a looming recession, people are nervous about their jobs. And uh, But people will take the stress of unemployment over the stress of being bullied any time. So, but the bystanders think they want to stay under the radar, they don't want to be the next target of the bully, so right. they, they don't want to say anything. People generally don't want to rock the boat. So I'm here to rock the boat. <laughs> fair, fair enough, and you are. <laughs> we'll just take a little break. When we come back, I want to just start off and spend another minute or two with the Amanda Todd tragedy and talk about youngsters who bully. Uh, and Anyway. Uh, that, sure. That's where we'll go. So we'll take a little breather here, folks. Remind you that davidburner.com is the site to go to. We're always happy to uh, hear your thoughts and emails and so on. And uh, this gives us a chance to say what? Thank you to the <laughs> lovely people who uh, are kind sponsors of this program and allow us to keep uh, airing these shows here on Shaw Community Television, Cable 4, back in a minute. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. KCM Wealth Management. The Trial Lawyers Association of BC.
Marie McGrath, registered nurse and the host of uh, the Sunday Night Sex Show on CKNW 98 is our guest. I'm phoning up next week with all my <laughs> sexual problems, which will take up, uh, it shows only an hour long. We can't even, we can't, we can't even start. Uh, <laughs> you can use an alias, but I'm afraid we'd recognize your voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just, we're talking about bullying and the office bully, but of course, the subject of bullying has been absolutely seized by by this Amanda Todd suicide and and her video and so on and it's, everybody's talking about it as we should as we mm -hmm. rightly should. What, what about youngsters who, who who are bullies? Do we get a kind of crowd mentality, a kind of herd mentality going on here? I mean, what happened with the young lady in Victoria ten years ago? Fifty mm -hmm. was it Rena Virk? Yes. Um, you get this kind of mob hysteria, let's go beat up Bob sort that's of right. thing. Yeah. That's very common in high school. And, and poor Amanda Todd, I have to say, uh, she, la she outlasted a lot of people. To withstand the abuse that she withstood during a developmental yeah. time, such as adolescence, between the ages of 12 and 15, it was is unbearable. And how she lasted lo that long, I think it's a credit to her parents and to the people who loved her and supported her. The very few people that, that did that. I think, you know, I think, Maureen, especially with teenagers uh, uh, who are, you know, struggling to go through this change from being children to being independent adults, they're going through the process of individuation and going through puberty and so on. I think it's difficult for some of us to see uh, where just normal, crazy, youthful behavior ends and something really ugly starts. Language, for example. Kids will say, oh, geek, fag. They, they'll mm -hmm. call kids names, mm -hmm. and they don't really mean, if, if they say fag, for example, they don't always mean, you're a homosexual and we hate homosexuals. Mm -hmm. It's just a word That's to right. a lot of kids. How do we start to discern when they really mean something and they mean it in an ugly way. Well, when it becomes a campaign or becomes an uh -huh. attack and it's repeated behavior, um, which is obviously what happened to Amanda, during the adolescent years, we want to separate from our parents. Yes. And, and that's healthy. And we, yeah. all we want to do is to fit in. And so when you have men or young, young men attacking yeah. her and, and men, you know, a, uh -huh. a man who couldn't even show his face, didn't have the courage to show his face on, on yeah. the um, internet. And also then the young girls gather in with the herd mentality because young girls don't realize what damage they're doing for their own future by they're actually becoming misogynistic in a way, in a yes. sense, much like the men are. So this is a real disdain for women. And this is really, this situation is actually, I don't really like to use the term bullying because I feel it's misogynism and sexism. She wow. was actually attacked. It was, I mean, and, and essentially she was murdered because yes. nobody can withstand this and certainly not a child. And that's a young child. And isn't one of the most powerful forces for, for kids, sort of 14 to 18, 13 to 18, the group isn't the, the sense of belonging we all got to wear the same jeans rolled mm -hmm. in the same way that's right we all got to thumb our exactly. li way through intersections we, and, uh, yeah. we all have to be on Facebook that yeah. was the other thing yeah, yeah. of course she just kept wanting to normalize her adolescence I think she yes. had a lot of courage a lot of strength to keep to keep going back and to keep trying again she just wanted to desperately be a normal teenager we'll learn a tremendous amount from Amanda Todd and she'll she'll be one of our heroines of this time I hope so so let's uh, let's go back to the the workplace bully, the office yes. bully, the the, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the Starbucks bully, because it happens everywhere. It right? happens in, everywhere in all of those environments. So so let's say someone is slowly being driven crazy. It's almost like a Hitchcock movie in a sense it is. because it always starts with a little, a few little things, That's and it right. escalates. That's right? right. So what to do? What to do? You know, I wanted to get back to some of the things yeah. that can happen that people don't realize. Meaningless tasks will be assigned to somebody that oh. have nothing to do with the oh, like, uh, going forward in the coffee? organization. <laughs> what, like get me Meaningless coffee? tasks. No, even tasks that are unrelated to the company, just something from out of nowhere. Also, people will be made to feel useless because they may be hired full time, but there may not be a lot of work for them, or enough full-time work for them, so they start to feel feel useless. This is a real campaign. This is a real, they're, they're, the bully is a pathological liar and a practice liar, really. So you're, you're dealing with that. And when you say crazy making, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I mean, but, and here's the dilemma. Let's say that you're 
doing very serious uh, guarding the gate secretarial work mm -hmm. for a CEO. Yes. And that's what you do. And then he asks you to get coffee. Well, you know. No, I, no, that's okay. It, it could be okay to get coffee. Mm -hmm. But then there could be the occasion when getting coffee is like, are you kidding me? Uh, what am I, your waiter? Right. There could be if they're taking yeah. advantage yeah, of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it depends what the role is, and then that's why could, it's really important. Could you pick up my dry cleaning? You know. Exactly. Uh, that uh, goes outside of the. So how do you? That's so. The problem is you're very well paid, and you have this excellent job because you're the gatekeeper for that's the boss, right? Which gives yes. you some real power. Yes. But if he's screaming at you and he's raging at you behind closed doors, there's yeah. a problem, and I wouldn't get coffee for anybody under those circumstances. And you just say, thank you very much, and that, have a lovely day. That's right. And have a new secretary. That's right. They're basically, well, yes, and yeah. to leave, and then to your point of what to do about this. So documentation yeah, is key. So you document the date and the time, and you also report it to the organization, and you document that as well. Now, I, I want to I really put a, a rubber stamp on that because I once had a problem in an environment I was working in mm -hmm. and I went to management and they said it's not it's not this person you're complaining about it's you mm -hmm. and I said pardon me and they said nobody wants to work with you you're a pain in the ass I said <laughs> okay that's fine thank you very much and I almost like a paranoid lunatic went home and started a document for every day for 45 days uh, personal infractions and work infractions mm -hmm. of this employee. Mm -hmm. Every day, there were mm -hmm. at least one of each. Mm -hmm. And after 45 days, I mm -hmm. walked in with the printout, right. and the boss was astonished. Stunned. And he said, oh my God, I'm glad you did this. You're yeah. right. Yes. And they got rid of him. That's right. That's, but, that was but, great. But they didn't believe me until I documented Of it. course. And that's why documentation yeah. is so important. And you write the date and the time of every single incident. And you know, you're pretty much going to plop into bed when you come home after you've yeah. been working with a workplace bully. So yeah. I say keep a notebook under the bed. Lie in the bed. Pull it, it out says, with your pen. Something occurs to you. That's right. And okay. document it. So okay. that's very important. Also go to your doctor. It's very oh. important to take care of yourself. And it's really about health. So describe the symptoms that you're having and and if he's a good physician he'll ask how's your life yeah you tell him about your job and what's been going on there so you want that documented as well and maybe take a stress leave or a medical leave and going to your doctor is not only for your health is it also part of the documentation process it is part of the documentation because you, you, process. you get the doctor to say yes uh, Gwen was here that's and she right. had these symptoms and that's right and she will be taking the next three weeks off people need a long time and that's not enough to recover from a workplace bully people need yes. sometimes some people never recover some people recover after um, you know eight ten months a year two years is not uncommon I've heard three four five years so wow. so it really affects the health psychologically and physically so it affects that in in both of those ways okay what about what about legal resources well the other thing is you're so knocked off your game you yes. feel you really do not feel well at all and so but one of the most powerful things you can do is file a complaint with the human rights tribunal uh, but you have six months to do that only but yes. people don't recover after six months so they don't think about it they let it go that's why I say it's a good idea to hire a lawyer who will take care of that for you and a lot of the lawyers will work um, percentage on a percentage basis so it won't cost you any money and then taking care of yourself so really that is according to the literature that is what works I don't understand something you said earlier and and it's in your notes that often the human resources department will not be helpful and that's, that's right. so peculiar to me why is that according to the research they're not helpful well you know to your point to your case it must be you. Oh no, we don't want to deal with the problem. We, they're, they're often not educated in workplace bullying. They have other, they're into hiring and firing or, or other more appealing aspects of a human resources position. So they, people don't understand it. It's hard to say, it's hard to describe being bullied. Well, he walked by me and he said, I didn't respond to your email because I didn't like what you put in it. And it's like, well, maybe he was having an off day. How about this? I was, I was sent to an environment not too long ago in recent months and paid as a consultant to tell them what I thought of what they were doing and one of the things I told the CEO was you don't listen to your employees right the result is that they tore up my report or at least they haven't responded to it and they basically I don't think will ever want to see me again because right. <laughs> I told them something that they don't want to hear that's right but that would actually cost them a whole lot less money in the end the research out of University of British Columbia by yes. Sandra Robinson Robinson yes. at um, Sauter School showed that the bystanders actually leave the workplace at a higher incident 
than the targets of bullies. They, they suffer a moral indignation, a guilt, a shame that they've done nothing about it. Uh -huh. And often people, because people don't have the tools, they don't have, they don't understand it, they don't know what to do about it, which is why EVA BC's program, Be More Than a Bystander, yes, in yeah. collaboration with the BC Lions, is such a great program. It just gives a little tool, that's not cool, just a few words to say, and it'll help to stop it. Let me, let me ask you about a simple human response and how delicate it can be, and that's called, as we say in therapy all the time, uh, drawing boundaries, uh, defining boundaries and saying, excuse me, uh, I'm happy to work with you, but I don't take that kind of commentary. That's too personal, it's inappropriate. Can you do that and get away with it? You could certainly do that, and setting healthy limits and boundaries are excellent. It's difficult to do when you've landed a new job, you're thrilled about it, you're, you're productive, and, and you have your boundaries that you bring to that. The trouble yes. is, once you've been a target of workplace bullying, yes. you lose all your boundaries, all of your, you're really a wreck. People need to understand, some people, um, In fact, that's get, what the wreckage is, isn't it? That is. It's that's the destruction exactly, of your boundaries. That's yeah. exactly right. And yeah. also people, it's not uncommon that people have suicidal ideations mm -hmm. as they work with an office bully. It's really destroying our society, our health care system, most common in, in uh, hospitals. In fact, the research at UBC was done in 41 nursing units across a large Canadian health authority. Mm -hmm. I'm a nurse. <laughs> MD, it's everywhere. MD, me doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, yes. thank you so much. Oh, great, you're great, welcome. Great, great and timely subject, and unfortunately, great and timely subject, but well I done. I know. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, okay, Maureen McGrath, uh, CKNW uh, 98, Sunday nights, 8 to 9, the Sunday night sex show. <laughs> All right, speaking of sexy, uh, November 6th is the American election, and I think that, that the pink elephant is still in the room and still not spoken about, and it's race. Yes, it's about jobs, it's about many other things. But race will always be in that conversation, and we're going to take a very funny take, a different take next week. My friend Gavin Walker, who's a wonderful saxophone player and jazz historian and broadcaster, will be here, and we're going to look at the politics of jazz and jazz in politics. All of that coming up next week. DavidBerner.com is the site to go to. Thank you all for being with us here on Shaw Community Television, Cable 4. Good night.